Hello, I'm Sudeep Maitra, and welcome to my presentation on Meltdown Attack Reproduction. The following paper and the demo code were used as reference for explaining and reproducing this attack. Meltdown is a microarchitectural vulnerability that takes advantage of optimization techniques such as out of order and speculative execution. At the processor execution levels, micro-ops are executed out of order and some operations are executed speculatively for performance reasons. Such operations leave footprints in the microarchitectural level such as cache access time and side channel attacks can be mounted to read inaccessible memory space, which ultimately defeats all security guarantees provided by address space isolation thereby undermining all the security measures built on top of this axiom. This vulnerability, although exists in much older CPUs, was only discovered in 2017 and publicly disclosed in 2018. Recent community were investigating different side channel attacks since early 2010s and it was kind of inevitable that such a fundamental vulnerability would be found eventually. To replicate the attack, I used Ubuntu 14.04, a distribution with a Linux kernel of 4.2. As far as I know, uh, from 4.2, uh, kernel address space layout randomization, also known as KSLR, has been activated or enabled by default. and um, uh, this kernel also does not have uh, KPTI or kernel page table isolation patch. Uh, so I disabled uh, uh, KSLR from uh, Grub menu. So the uh, kernel start address is at the default location after uh, reboot. I will talk about both KPTI and KSLR when I talk about the uh, mitigation strategies. Uh, another thing I did was I turned off hyper-threading. In my experience, that improved the performance. Um, and this proof of concept attack uses Intel TSX to capture or suppress exceptions which means um, this code won't work on CPUs that are older than IB Bridge. For replicating this attack, we need to flush the addresses that we will, we will uh, use as uh, the covert channel from the cache. Then, uh, the inline assembly, with inline assembly, we will uh, read the kernel address space. Notice that uh, this must be declared as a volatile so that the compiler doesn't optimize anything. This will, of course, like um, reading from kernel address, uh, will, of course, raise a hard fault called a uh, segmentation fault but we can trap the exception with transactional synchronization extension instruction or TSX. TSX basically groups atomic operations and if one fails, it aborts all the other transactions and uh, discards all the side effects, but it doesn't raise an exception. However, uh, the effects of the operation is still visible at the microarchitectural level. Intel TSX also provides a fallback path defined by the user, which is very convenient for an attacker. When we try to read from an address we shouldn't be reading from, a segmentation fault is raised called 6xb. 
we can use a uh, sig action instruction uh, to catch the exception and skip over the offending instruction, thereby suppressing the exception. Note that there are other ways of handling exceptions that are also discussed in the paper, but this implementation uses TSX for ease of implementation and performance reasons. Finally, we retrieve the data by checking the cache access time. Read time stamp counter loads 64-bit counter value into EDX and EX registers. RDTSC is not a serializing instruction, so we use memory fence and load fence instructions to ensure timestamping operation is not reordered during runtime. This is the attack reproduction demonstration of Meltdown. And here you can see it's starting to read from a uh, kernel space. And if you run it again, you can see the values are changing. And it shows that it is live. Kernel Address Space Layout Randomization, or KSLR, randomizes kernel start address for each reboot. Although it's not difficult to overcome, I disabled it from Grub Menu to get the best chance. KPTI is not available on older kernels. It is inspired by Kaiser, a patch which doesn't map the entire kernel into user process virtual memory. Meltdown doesn't work on Linux kernels that have KPTI patch, which cause, but, but it causes um, big performance hits for system calls. Switching page tables also requires flushing translation look aside buffer. The attack, uh, or at least this implementation, also didn't work on VMware Workstation 16 player, uh, virtual m machine manager which has some measures against uh, side channel attacks so I had to use a native system. Disabling hyperthreading improved the performance in my case and this implementation also doesn't work on near CPUs uh, like Intel Comet Lake and Ice Lake CPUs uh, because Intel has discontinued uh, TSX. Although KSLR is easy to overcome, uh, Kaiser was uh, inspired uh, because of the weakness of uh, KSLR. And uh, it is a viable software solution, but it is not without performance degradation. CPU manufacturers have also implemented other restrictions such as uh, branch prediction, uh, speculation and cache flushing, and uh, Intel has introduced Intel SGX to provide hardware isolation between privileged and unprivileged processes. Although leakage from hardware optimization was accepted for a long time, Meltdown demonstrates that exploiting such vulnerability can be very simple and consequences can be severe. Apart from cache timing, a whole host of other side channel attacks do exist and near ones are being found almost every year. Near attacks like foreshadow and SGX Spectre have been shown to break even Intel's SGX. So it is high time that industry and researchers add security vertical to hardware optimization techniques. That's the end of this presentation. Thank you for listening. And if you have any questions or comments, feel free to email me.